everybody, I hope you enjoyed the story that I shared on Monday. I just thought it was something a little bit silly for you to have a little listen to. Today, we are going to start reading our new class book. And it's a bit of a bigger story, so it should last us a couple of days. And this book is called Julius Sebra, Entangled with the Egyptians by Gary Northfield. This book is a bit later in the series, so it's book three. But obviously, it's linked to our topic of the Egyptians, which is why we have chosen this. Now... The main character of the story is called Julius and he is a zebra, but he's a bit of a zebra of a difference. At this, in the previous books, he has been a gladiator during the Roman time. So he was trained by the gladiators to go into the amphitheatres and join in with battles. And he's now got a mission and his mission is he's going to release all the animals that have been trained as gladiators to let them be free and let them make their own choices. Now, at the start of this book, where we're going to meet Julius, he is going to be on a ship because he is trying to chase Septimus, who is the man or the gladiator who has trained him to fight. And he wants to stop him getting his hand on any more animals. So we're going to start with chapter one, and that is the ship of fools. Are you sure this is how to sail the ship, Cornelius? Yes, cried Cornelius as he desperately stood on his tiptoes, grasping the wet tiller. Just hold the big stick steady. Julius wiped the blinding rain from his eyes. But I'm sure we'll go around in circles, he shouted. Double check those instructions again. With a huff, Cornelius reached into the pouch tied round his waist and pulled out the crumpled scrap of parchment. The soggy note flapped furiously in the wind as he struggled to read it. We're doing exactly what it says, Cornelius called out. Hold the tiller steady in a heavy storm. See? Just as Cornelius held his note proudly aloft, a great gust of wind snatched it from its hoof and tossed it into the sea. Oh, that's just brilliant, groaned Julius. How are we supposed to catch Septimus now? Forget Septimus. We should turn around, Cornelius squealed, or else this storm will just swallow us whole. But Julius was having none of it. Wait here, he growled through gritted teeth, pulling himself along the deck. Hold us, steady, Cornelius, I'm fetching help. I refuse to let Septimus get away after all our hard work. A huge wave crashed against the side and Julius stumbled as he headed towards the captain's cabin. He reached the open hatch and grabbing hold of the long slippery ladder he climbed down gingerly into the dank dark underbelly of the ship in the gloom julius pushed past Milus the lion who was lying on a tatty hammock on his belly gently slept pliny the mouse their tiny combat trainer displeased at being woken Milus ground at julius are we there yet donkey no we're not snapped julius and the way things are looking we'll never get there Julius clambered over a pile of soggy crates and sacks where he finally found the rest of his companions huddled in a circle. So, here we have got Brutus, who's Julius's older brother. We have got Felix, who is a dim-witted antelope and rock collector. We've got Rufus, who is an enthusiastic gladiator and Lucia's wingman. Here we've got Lucia, who's a vegetarian chariot-racing crocodile who is always ready with a cunning plan. And they are playing a board game, which Brutus is saying, woohoo, finding this board game is the best thing ever. And a lot of them are having a bit of a battle with that board game. And Julius is not happy. Oh, you lazy bonehead, stop playing your stupid game and come and help us. Everyone jumped out of their skins, apart from his brother Brutus, who refused to look up. You'll have to wait, Julius, he growled. This is a very tense match. He waved his hoof to shoo away his brother. Will you listen? We're sailing into a storm and we need all hands on deck, Julius shouted. Rufus, Lucia and Felix all leapt up in horror. What? they screamed. I thought the ship was swaying a bit, gasped Felix. It's been hard work trying to watch the game. Can we not just finish the game first? shouted Brutus. Do you have to spoil everything? Before Julius could reply, there was a great bang as the ship buckled and twisted under the force of an enormous wave. 
it tipped over sideways, hurling everyone and all their cargo into the air. The ship very quickly righted itself, but Julius knew another big wave could hit at any moment and ripped the old ship apart. He hurried up the wet ladder. Come on, we need to get this ship through the storm. Suddenly, Lucia started screaming, We're letting water in! We're letting water in! She pointed frantically at the big leak spurting water. You, Rufus and Milus, block that hole, ordered Julius. The rest of you, follow me. That game totally counts as a win, though, right? Not now, Rufus. Climbing out of the hatch, Julius poured... Julius raced over to poor Cornelius, who was still wrestling with the big tiller. Help me! Quick! Lucia and Julius leapt onto the big stick and held it as steadily as possible. Grab the other one and hold it, yelled Julius to Felix and Brutus, who quickly ran to the other side of the boat and grasped the second flailing tiller. As the rain lashed down from the pitch black clouds, the sea looked like a crazy mountain range thrusting high into the sky before crashing back down into the swirling chasms. The wind screamed as it ripped through the sail, dragging the ship from one frightening lunge to another. We need to get that sail down before it pulls us under, said Cornelius. But how? cried Julius. Suddenly the great gale whipped through the ship, sweeping the stricken vessel high up on a mountainous wave. There was a loud cracking noise as the sail was buffeted out as if it fit to burst. Look out, screamed Brutus, as heavy ropes that held the sail to the ship pinged off like there were mere washing lines. With another frightening crack, the mast and the sail were torn off into the raging turmoil of the storms. Well, that sorted that problem out. Then, at that moment, Cornelius looked past Julius, the blood draining from his little face. I... I think it might just be the beginning of our problems, he squeaked, pointing upwards. Julius turned to see a monstrous wall of water rising and blocking out the sky. C can you swim, Julius? stuttered Cornelius. Um, we'll soon find out, he gulped, and he held his breath, squeezed his eyes shut, and clung onto the tiller for dear life. I'll read another little bit for you tomorrow, so make sure you come back to read, hear the next section. Bye.